New fallout after a bloody weekend of gun violence in America's cities. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp calling in the National Guard after 31 people were shot in Atlanta and an eight-year-old girl was killed. New York City is seeing a spike in crime, shootings up 130 percent last month compared to the same time last year. And a shocking video shows a father gunned down crossing the street in broad daylight with his six-year-old daughter as he holds her hand. Mayor Bill de Blasio under pressure to act. The New York Post telling him to do something. The cover very similar to the 1990s when Mayor David Dinkins experienced a crime wave. All of this happening in the backdrop of the defund the police movement. Relatives of victims of gun violence are saying we need more cops to prevent violence. We can't take money from the police department. We need the police. You take the police from there and we wind up having less police officers in the street, less detectives. It's not going to work. The crime is going to get worse. If we're going to go after the police officers when they um, hurt someone that looked like me. We need to go after the people that look like me that hurt people that look like me. And CNN's Don Lemon causing controversy for lecturing actor Terry Crews over Black Lives Matter. Black people need to hold other black people accountable. I said this the same thing. This is a, a, the black America's version of the Me Too movement. The Black Lives Matter movement was started because it was talking about police brutality. If you want an all Black Lives Matter movement that talks about gun violence in communities, including, you know, black communities, then start that movement with that name. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about. So we'll get to all of this. Juan, let me start with you. Um, so we had the worst violent crime wave in years just about days after city officials took a billion dollars away from the NYPD to appease some pretty violent people that were outside demanding that a billion dollars be cut from the NYPD. And now you have this violent crime. If you think back to the 1990s and how bad it got then and how long it took to get things back to a safe place so that New York City could be that thriving, safe city. Um, what do you think should be done? And if the papers are calling for Mayor de Blasio to try to finally do something, will he listen to those communities that are asking for more police, not fewer? I think they want better police, Dana. Um, I think that, you know, let's first of all, I think let's debunk this theory that somehow there's this crime wave going on out there. The reality is uh, crime is down in the top 25 American cities, 5 percent. Violent crime is down 2 percent. But what you have is murder up about 16 percent in those 25 big American cities. But note, even as we're talking about that, you should keep in mind that the murder rate that we're experiencing now in a place like New York is the same as it was in 2015. So there's a lot of politics loaded into the way that people are looking at what I see as an explosion in terms of gun violence. And why is that? I think it's, uh, according to the experts, they point at a lot of these gangsters, a lot of these drug dealers, even a surge in terms of domestic violence cases. And it's all really being accelerated by easy access to guns. We're looking at gun violence. So to me, what we have here is a mixed situation, and it comes in the aftermath, of course, of the George Floyd case. But I just really object to the suggestion that the police aren't doing their job or that somehow, because of increased scrutiny on police after the George Floyd murder, that police are backing off, that police aren't committing these murders that are resulting in the spike. This is black-on-black -black crime in poor neighborhoods done by hoodlums. Uh, and that's why I say, of course, every community wants better policing, but it's not to be somehow used to dilute uh, people who are upset over police brutality in America. All right, Emily, let me ask you about that, because how do you... It, you can't solve other problems in terms of getting... Even if you wanted reform or better policing, if you are in the middle of a situation where you have... B what I'm looking at, like, some pretty s shocking statistics when it comes to increase in crime. That's exactly right, Dana. This requires a cohesion that a lot of these big cities are missing to include two really important elements, which are enforcement and follow through. So what does it matter if we call for more cops or we bring in the National Guard to augment local departments if they're not able to make any arrests or if they are, but then there isn't a prosecution? 
or if there's a prosecution, but there aren't actual deterrent consequences or judicial discretion to, say, withhold bail or to make an exception to a pre-classified nonviolent crime if he or she feels that that situation warrants detainment or extended custody. And all of that falls flat also if state and local leadership aren't engaging in messaging of a zero tolerance for violence and crime and also support for law enforcement, both conceptual and also for the rank and file. I just see an overarching problem that at every juncture, there's a lack of follow through. And so, of course, it's going to embolden criminal behavior, both at the organized level that Juan mentioned and also the local petty level. And at, it also stymies then that workable solution that depends on all of those interrelated factors that I just talked about. Yeah. Sorry about that train. It's like really loud today and it's early as well. Jesse, down in uh, Georgia where Brian Kemp, the governor, has just um, called in the National Guard and a state of emergency in the state, the Democratic Senate candidate, John Ossoff, is calling for gun control, not urging calm in the streets. Well, just to go back to what Juan said, Juan said, crime is flat, but homicides are up. Well, <laughs> homicide is a crime, Juan, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that homicide is probably the worst crime there is. So let's just get that straight. <laughs> the other thing is everybody with a brain knows that in a violent neighborhood with a lot of drug trafficking, you need a strong police presence because what the police do, they pull people over and they take illegal guns and narcotics out of the car. They also serve warrants and take dangerous guys off the streets. They use task forces, informants and undercovers to stop drug and illegal gun trafficking. So when the police pull back, crime surges. It also doesn't help when there's a pandemic that squeezes drug profits and the buy side falls out onto the bottom and prices drop. So people are fighting violently over a smaller piece of the pie. So now you have people fleeing cities because of the pandemic, fleeing cities because of a crime wave. And you're going to have what we saw in Manhattan, which is a gritty, ungovernable city where no one wants to live in because it's a low quality of life. Everybody knows mm. blacks don't hate the police and the police don't hate black people. Yes, there are issues, but we can deal with them through mutual respect. And I don't think it's too late for the president to make a speech on the teleprompter that says, I feel the suffering of certain sections of black America. I understand that police take a lot of risk when they police these dangerous streets. I support both the black community and the police community, and I will pour all of the resources of the federal government to help save every single American life because every single American life is precious and safety is not a political issue. That could go a long way, and I don't think it's too late for him to deliver a speech like that. Also, Greg, I did want to get back to this um, issue of the last night when uh, CNN's Don Lemon had actor Terry Crews on. And you ever have um, a situation where a guest is invited on or you've been a guest somewhere and the host won't let you talk? Um, I will stop talking and allow you to talk about what happened last night on CNN. Well, the, uh, we didn't show that clip, which was Terry Crews He's an eloquent person trying to make a very important point that Black Lives Matter isn't about police brutality. It's about remaking America because they keep uh, talking about systemic racism without specifics. And what they're trying to tell you is that we need to throw everything out. And I'm not exaggerating this. OK, their leaders will tell you this, that they want to get rid of capitalism, patriotism and replace it with identity politics, which pits race versus race. The belief behind that is that we are irredeemable as a country and that we are guilty of deeds of our ancestors. It's incredibly poisonous, but he, but Don Lemon couldn't let Terry make that point. So what he did is he race-splained to Terry Crews. He, mm. he talked over him and through him because he was terrified the viewers might actually hear the truth and that he didn't want a black man's voice that wasn't Lemon's. And it's a comparison worth noting, you know, 
Terry Crews has been around. He played in the NFL. He's an artist. He's an active. He's an activist. He's an actor. He's got five kids. I mean, Lemon is just a media mouthpiece. And if you take the contrast larger. As this violence explodes across the country, and by the way, Juan, nobody is saying here that the cops aren't doing his, their jobs. We're saying that politicians and leaders aren't letting them do their jobs. It's a very fine detail that you love to gloss over. Back to Terry Crews. Right now, what does Terry Crews care about? He cares about the suffering in his community, the real problems, the black on black crime. But Don Lemon is in the media. So what does he care about? Defunding the police, the destro destroying monuments, perceived racism of products and people. So he's chasing the symbolic crap. And Terry Crews is actually trying to solve the bigger problems. And it makes you wonder, why is it that people like Don Lemon in the media don't actually want to address the real problems? Because maybe they realize that those real problems are caused by them i.e. Democrats and liberals who run the cities, who, who, who put out these policies, who make the police stand back and prevent the police from doing their jobs and helping the people in minority neighborhoods. Maybe that's why Don Lemon doesn't want to talk about it, because it's the cities, Democrat cities, that we're seeing hell unleashed. And he doesn't want, he doesn't want to have the, their viewers to see the truth. And that's why he talked over Terry Crews. All right. I'll never talk over you, that's for sure.